And what a bitchy! Volkswagen up! Exclamation mark. And the customer complaint on this one is the handbrake sticks on. Clearly not on that wheel. This car is a key worker for NHS there. But we come round to the left side here. And uh, on this wheel here, well, with one hand, I can't even move it. Hey, got two hands on it now. So the handbrake's off, of course, because the, the left side is free, no problem. So I'll have to see about getting this drum off now. On these Volkswagens, pretty common problem is the lever on the shoes jams on the on the pivot. Or, or it could be the handbrake cable uh, sticks as well in Volkswagen, so it's either the, the lever on the shoes on the handbrake side of it or, uh, or the cable itself. So I think what it is, but if you have a sticky drum, if you have a handbrake that is uh, sort of on here, as we have here, it's getting this drum off is going to be the tricky bit, but We'll show you how to do that, hopefully. So, on these Volkswagens, the adjuster mechanism is like a wedge. So it goes down into, into like a V or a triangle shape. So it's a, there's a spring in the end of that and the spring pulls the wedge down. So as the, the shoes expand, the wedge can move down because it's under spring tension. So what we need to do is we need to get push that wedge up the way. And we'll do that through the wheel nut hole. So, to give us a bit of an idea where it is, it's going to be in around this area here somewhere. So clearly we have our lever here. The cable is going to come in from, from this side and pull on the lever, pull the lever in that motion. So our adjuster is going to be over here somewhere. So we need to look in th through the, the bolt hole here uh, to see if we can see, if we can find the bottom of that. So I'm going to have to spin this uh, drum, which doesn't spin at all. So what we'll do is uh, we'll grab a couple of nuts here and uh, we'll just use a, a pry bar or screwdriver or something to uh, spin this round and keep a torch in this bolt hole here and we'll see if we can see that adjuster. Right, let's see if we can get this round here. There she blows, I can see it. So, I don't really see it or not, but that's the, the sort of bottom end of the wedge. So, there we go. So, get a flat screwdriver in, and uh, not catching the spring, we're gonna pull this wedge up, like that. Yeah. Then we'll just, Pull these uh, studs out here, uh, wheel bolts really they are, I suppose. And uh, okay, so we have a wee, we had a wee uh, Torx retaining screw there, so you know clearly this drum is separate from the hub. So that'll be stuck to the hub, so uh, it's rotating nice and freely on the shoes now, now, the f now they're free, and uh, we'll just need to have to give us a bit of persuasion. So the easy way to do that to an air hammer, you can use an, an ordinary hammer, but I'm gonna wind the air hammer on it here. Oh. 
Give it a wee bit more persuasion. Come on, baby. Well, that was grim. Got there, but there's some amount of uh, some amount of dust in here. It is mangan. I can tell you. So all we need to see is that lever stuck. So that's our handbrake lever, and you can't really see it. That's all now. So let's see. We'll give it a wee, a wee prize. We'll go the other way. Uh, it is sort of free. It's not as free as what I would like. So, so yeah, I think that's the cause of the problem. But looks of things, these shoes are in grim condition. Uh, a lot of dust about with this uh, this handbrake being on, basically. Uh, so. We'll take these shoes off and confirm that it's this uh, this lever here is, is sticky. You can see it's a bit rusty looking. Don't know if you can see that or not. Aha! 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 That's uh, a wee bit better. Maybe. So, if we prize that, it's just, uh, it just stays in position. And, uh, yeah. So, what you could do, now there's a couple of things you could do here, <clears throat> you know, you could take these shoes off and, you know, loosen all this up. So, where's the, the rivet or the pivot point of that lever? And uh, it's just corroded up. So, it's a very common problem on all Volkswagens with shoes. This lever sticks. So, now the, the, the cable stick as well, okay, so I'm not saying that this is a the only cause of this symptom. So, uh, you know, sure shooting this lever is, is stuck here. We can see that it's not springing back. So, uh, yeah, common, common problem. See it loads and loads of times. What I'm gonna recommend here to a customer is we change, we just put a new set of shoes on, you know, cause these are, are clearly worn with, with it being stuck on all the time. You could take these off, free that up, you know, bit of penetrating oil and, move it back and forward, you know, like you would free up a set of pliers or something. But, uh, yeah. The way I put it to them, uh, to punters, is if I have to take these off, what's the point in putting these old worn things back on again? You know, the work, the work is taking these off and putting the new ones on. So, you know, what, what are you saving? Just put new ones on. You know, these, these here, they're, they're not expensive, you know. So... We'll have a wee look at the other side. Um, a strategy with, with doing brake shoes, uh, I recommend, is do one at a time. Don't take both sets off and, uh, you know, you, you don't know where the springs go and you have them in the wrong orientation. The, all this stuff has to go in specifically the way, the way it is here. So, you know, if you get anything mixed up, it won't work properly. So you just do one at a time and uh, we'll take it from there. But... Getting these shoes off and in, there's there's a couple of wee tricks I have, uh, you know, I'm going to share with you in this video. May make it a bit easier to do shoes because a lot of people struggle with pulling these springs off and, and all that jazz. On these particular tape, uh, this top spring in here, you're, you're never going to get that. You're never going to get that into place or pulled off. You're, you're going to kill yourself trying to do that. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Right, we're over on the on the right hand side, so I've taken that drum off and all. And look enough, 
these back plates here are brave and rigid. So I don't normally like praising on it there, but uh, on that left one, I had, I had no choice. It, she wasn't coming at all. Now this one here was free, uh, you know, so it was spinning free. So I did the same thing again. We put the screwdriver in, popped the wedge thing up, and uh, not allowed it to come off. Still had to hammer it a bit, and what have you, but uh, it, was, it was a lot better than the other one. Anyway, it didn't really have to praise it on this side. But I have a concern here with this thing here. So these two pistons, when you press the brake pedal, those two pistons come out and splay the, the shoes out. But uh, this one here appears to be leaking. So she's in bad shape. Uh, don't like the look at it at all. So yeah, we're going to do a complete refurb, new shoes, new wheel sunders. These things are called wheel sunders. And uh, these wee piston, these double piston thingies. And uh, yeah, we'll do the whole lot. This drum on this right hand side isn't in the best in it either. Let's see if we can get it in the shot for you there. Yeah, so I could dress that up, but I think we'll just change the drums as well. So there's a couple of ways of, of approaching this. You know, you could take this hub off. Now, you see the springs in this thing? They're away in the back. You'll, you'll never get these springs out in this particular design. So these Volkswagen style uh, drum brakes, uh, this one's on an up exclamation mark. You get the same on the smaller one, smaller Volkswagens like Polos. Skoda Fabias, you know, those type of cars. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll never get these springs out, as I said. You'll, you'll fight with them. So one method is you take this hub off. And basically what you want to do is you take these shoes off and sort of like a cassette with these springs, these top springs still in place. You can take, we'll get the, the bottom spring off. I'll show you how to do that. None of this old pulling home with, uh, you know, pins and clicking face grips onto the springs and trying to pull. You, you know, you, you never do it. You, you make do it, but you bear forever. And uh, you'll break your fingers and all. So I have to change these wheel cylinders anyway. So what I'm going to do, and the way I normally do these anyway, is take these wheel cylinders off. And, you know, the whole thing sort of lifts up out you know, as a cassette. And you change, you change, uh, you change this mechanism here, this adjusting mechanism and stuff like that, and with the springs, you change it over onto the new shoes on the bench. So I prefer not to touch this hub. You know, there's a big bolt in here. It's a stretch bolt, and it's really, really tight. And you just, just don't touch that. You can do it without touching that, but you have to take the wheel cylinder off. There's no real other way of doing it. So, uh, but that's no big deal. I'm going to change them anyway. So, first thing I'm going to do, and this may seem a wee bit counterintuitive, is I am going to drive this adjusting wedge back down again and actually splay the shoes out again. Now, some people might think, what are you doing? What the hell are you doing that for? You mad? But You'll maybe see why a wee bit later on, if I can get it. Oh, it's not going to come, but... There we go. I'll just knock that a wee bit. Back into place again. So... So that's our wee wedge pushed down again. So the idea there is to bring these shoes out again. And let's put a wee bit of tension on this spring back here. The yeah, moves see that a wee bit better there. So that spring is uh, under a bit of tension and the wee wedge is back down again. So the reason for that is so that these are out and then this will come towards us. So what we want to do now is take these wee boys off. Now, I have a tool for doing that. So it fits over that and you just turn it. So that's all it is there. Not much to it, but you could use pliers or whatever, but you know, <laughs> the, the beauty of this tool is that thing doesn't go ping away across the garage and never to be seen again. 
and uh, we just press her in and turn like so and we're going to take our wee pin out do the same on the other side got that one first time so we're going to do now is release this bottom spring and if you have a screwdriver with flats on it it's a wee bit handier so we'll pop that up in behind the hub and uh, tease that out there like that and we'll do the same on the other side so that springs a lot looser now the whole thing's a lot looser and what will happen now is the whole cartridge will now rest on the hub so you see when it's dropped down so this bit here is now sitting on the on the back of the hub there so at the back here we're going to disconnect this brake pipe now in a lot of you know cars with calipers and stuff you know you usually have a flexible hose going on the caliper and uh, to stop the brake fluid whenever you disconnect the line or whatever to the caliper you know you, you crimp the hose and it stops the brake fluid coming out in this case here, well, there's a hose. There'll be a hose somewhere on the on the axle. But uh, what I'm going to do, I have we uh, we boys made up. Whenever I disconnect that, I'll just uh, screw it on the end of that and stop the fluid coming out. There will be a wee bit. Obviously, it will need blade, and uh, yeah. But another thing you can do, another wee trick, is to stop the the brake fluid from just constantly dripping out. You just keep the the brake pedal you just hold the brake pedal down with a bit of wood on the seat or something and uh, that'll actually stop the all the fluid from leaking out so you can do that you can do a couple of things and uh, we'll just get this well doused here um, there's a wee 10 mil screw somewhere there's it there you could just can't see it there's a wee 10 mil screw there sometimes they snap because the wheel cylinder is made of aluminium and that is a steel screw so you just have to be careful with that because uh, if you're reusing the wee cylinder if you're going to put it back on again or in this case I'm going to put a new one on but the new ones don't usually come out wee 10 wee, it's a wee 10 mil bolt but you can just replace it if it does snap on it but uh, we'll get this all loosened off so that's our brake pipe uh, removed and a wee stopper on it that wasn't a, a 10 mil as I thought it was it was a a T25 uh, Torx on that wee buyer and the bleed nipple is removed completely as well so that'll, that'll allow the uh, the wheel cylinder to come off from the front uh, the bleed nipple well you could leave it on but you know it's going to come off far easier if you take it off so a couple of wee love taps on this and there we go that's all right so that's why we splayed the the shoes out with the, the adjuster just so that that would come out and uh, that's in the bin okay now we can just take a spring off the hand really probably like that and uh, she'll lift up and bend her down so we can disconnect the handbrake cable. So this is probably the trickiest part of this job, believe it or not, is disconnecting this handbrake cable. Because this spring here is quite strong, believe it or not, on the on these Volkswagens. So what I do is I'll probably not be able to film this because I'll need two hands and three hands maybe. Is if we can get that spring back this is a trim tool put it back up as much as we can and then clamp the cable with a pair of ice grips to hold that spring up so you know you could maybe get it out of that but that's what I like to do right so let's see if the cable will come out of that hopefully that will Right, I got it. How to get the camera out of the way there, but uh, so I put a 
pair, another pair of face grips, he's parent those ones on, on there to hold it and then just manoeuvred it out. And then we'll just, we'll just keep that spring slid up the sheath. Now they're, they're not clamped really, really tight. They're just holding that spring back. So we'll just leave that there to go. So this is what we're left with. So we're going to remove that. And what we'll do is we'll take that spring there out as well. And just put that to the side. And we're left with this uh, contraption here, which is all under tension at the minute. So we can slide that back up again. Uh, if I get a hammer handy, we can, like that. So that's now going loose. So what we need to do is transfer, get the end of the shot, transfer uh, this bit onto the new shoes. So they're brave and rigid there, and they're not they're not moving anywhere. You know. So they're not going anywhere there at the minute. So, so this is where the wee trick comes in. How do you get that piece there transferred onto your new shoes? I'm going to show you. One of the shoes in the vase there, and uh, it ain't going anywhere. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our, our wee adjuster out first thing. So we can just pull it back and lift that out. And what we can also do then is we can bring that down and that'll release that spring. So that's her separated. With the, the handbrake linkage side of the shoe in the vase now, we can just we can move out the uh, handbrake linkage there. The handbrake lever. That's that mechanism out there. So that one wasn't too bad on the on the rivet, but uh, scrap. Right, so we've got our new shoe in the vase. And you just need to watch when you get these shoes. You know they are sided, so you have a left and a right, and uh, you know you just need to make sure you're there the right way around. So we're going to do the same thing only in reverse, hopefully. And this is, this is why when you're going to assemble these things, you know, you're better not, you know, leaving these down and, and doing it the next day. You're better disassembling and reassembling it while it's in your head, you know. And that's another reason uh, as well why you leave the other, you do one side at a time because you get these things mixed up very easily you know, what holes these go into. There's some of these holes aren't used and all that sort of nonsense, you know. So we're going to put this spring in here first. And uh, I don't know where my, my hands are getting in the way of the camera. But anyway, so we're leaving this big spring on here as well, this other one, this one. And uh, we're going to tease her up. So with her in the vase, we'll pull her out. We can get her in like that. Is that in? And it's not in correctly. So we'll have to pull her out again. That's it. Okay. So for our other side then, so with this spring here, we're going to set that in to the hole there like that just you know so we can grab a hold of that and you know some warm gloves the gloves are for so that you know i don't get all sorts of muck on the lining here so uh, even though they're not probably not the cleanest the gloves but sure it's the best i can do under the circumstances and we just pull that into place and that well we're not finished yet so what i'm going to do i'm going to reverse that round uh Run the other way in the vase. All right, so the reverse round, what we're going to do is put our wee adjuster back in. So you can see the, the wee bit, bottom bit of the wedge, you know, it's a wee bit wider. The other thing to note here, this wee dimple, see that wee dimple there? So if you put this in the wrong way, and no, it's upside down, if you put this in the wrong way with the dimple facing out the way, it'll catch in that hole there. 
so it'll not adjust. So you need to make sure the flat side is, uh, is against that. So just, just keep that in mind. So we're gonna put in the right way around. And the same thing again, we're gonna give it a pull. And that's that in. So there you go, uh, I hope that maybe you got something out of that, you know, no pulling and hauling at springs at all. On this particular type of design, now I'm not saying that, you know, all brake shoes, you don't have to pull the, the, the springs and pull them in. Some designs you do. On Volkswagens, and from my experience of working on all the Volkswagen Group cars, set of is Polos, all these small cars with uh, drums at the back, they're all the same. They all use that sort of concept and that sort of wedge style adjuster. So I'm gonna tell you, that wedge style adjuster that goes down and you see me putting it back up again in order for to get the drum on, you know? So this is completely out of adjusted at the adjustment at the minute. So what's left to do is I'm gonna do the other side and uh, you saw me uh, letting the fluid coming out of the bleeding nipple. So that was just getting the fluid into the into the wheel cylinder. So we'll, you know, pump the brakes and stuff like that. Now what I like to do, another wee tip is, the only thing sort of holding this this drum onto, onto the hub is this wee torque screw. And it's, you know, that's not really there. Uh, you know, it just holds it in place to get the wheel on. The wheel clamps the drum to the hub with the, uh, the wheel bolts. So whenever we have that drum in its sort of proper position, in its final position where it's clamped to this, you know, it's, it's really tight, then I'm going to pump the brakes. I'm going to do a wee quick vacuum bleed. You know, there'll be hardly any, if, if nothing uh, at all in the, in the line of air coming out of that because I had the brake uh, pipe capped. So it's just whatever was in the, in the wheel cylinder and you saw that the, the fluid basically pushes that out itself nearly, it nearly self bleeds. But anyway, I'll draw a wee bit out, I'll take a wee bit of uh, fluid out on a vacuum bleed. Pump the brakes up, uh, you know, and uh, actually at the handbrake a few times, make sure it's all working, make sure there's nothing sticking, nothing on toward. I'm gonna say to you that the wade style adjuster in this actually works quite well. I'm happy enough to leave that adjuster in the upward position and then whenever those shoes come out, whenever the pistons go out and whenever the handbrake's actuated, 
that then that wee wedge thing will get pulled down on that spring and will adjust that, will self adjust that. So that works quite well. The other design that, you know, the rotating sort of screw design, you know, you have to adjust that up yourself and uh, get the adjustment into place before you can send the car because those style are, they basically don't work. This style actually does work. So I'm quite happy just to pump the brakes up and send it. So there you go. Hope you get something out of it. You know, I couldn't film all of it because, you know, it's, the camera does get in the road. But I think, uh, I think most of it's there. So, okay. Thanks very much for watching, as ever. And all the best. And...